Thomas Riddle is the assistant director at the Roper Mountain Science Center. Y'all are part of the Greenville County School System. Yes. And you've been, you have children coming through all day long during the Absolutely. school year learning about science and the natural world. Um, and not just the natural world, but all sorts of scientific activities. But right. right now, you've got a special event that really is geared towards the outside in South Carolina. So let's learn about that. Absolutely. So what we're doing is we're opening um, a lot of the public for the first time this consecutively. Um, five weeks, six days a week, we'll be open for our Butterfly Adventure, which kicks off this Saturday from 9 to 3 with our Butterfly Festival. And at the, um, at the event, you not only can go into our Butterfly House, our Butterfly Encounter, but we have our Living History Farm open and the rest of our exhibits um, from the Marine Ecology Lab to the Environmental Science Lab, um, the Arboretum, the Outside Butterfly Garden. So <sighs> there's a lot to see. A lot to do. Pack a picnic. Absolutely. And I think even some of our um, clips and people, I think Corey or some of his um, co co-workers are going to be out there with you too. Yeah, we're excited to have our local Clemson Extension office there. Uh, they're going to be talking about pollinators and, um, and absolutely. That's a hot topic. We all yes, love pollinators. Giving yeah. away um, milkweed seed. And Ooh. so, yeah, so it's going to be, it's going to be a lot of fun. We're, okay. we're great partners with them or they're great partners with us and, and we love having them out. Well, um, let's, we, we're showing some pictures of, of some of the butterflies and things and some of the things that will be happening out there. And it already looks fun. There's this cool thing going on of Q-tips that we're going to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> too, but it's a lot better than sticking one in your ear and trying to get the wax out, isn't it? Right. So, so first of all, let's see what we've got um, in this wonderful little um, contraption that you brought with you here, Thomas. Right. So we have we'll have twelve different um, native species uh -huh. that are going to be on display in the butterfly. Um, habitat and some of them will be like the eastern tiger swallowtail which is of course south carolina state butterfly yes, uh -huh. um, the buckeye the pipeline swallowtail um, we also will have not in the butterfly um, habitat but um, separately in the ecology lab um, demonstrations on the I life cycle still, of the yeah, luna moth uh, the, the luna, luna moth, moth yeah. yes and we talk about the life cycle of the luna moth. And, of course, the luna moth is one that you would see at nighttime. Sometimes you'll find them um, at, um, on the screen door in the morning because they've lit there during the night. Right. And it's one that comes out just at night. And it has those, what do you call those long, a long tail, I guess you call right. it. Right. They're beautiful wings. And, um, and I think right here we actually have the um, caterpillars. We okay. do. And look at these beautiful green fellows. And I'll tell you, Amanda, when, when Corey and I started down the road this afternoon, about 2 o'clock, uh, this box was full of sweet gum leaves, and uh -uh. they are voracious really? eaters uh, wow. at this stage in their life. And as you can see, um, just about all gone. Just about all gone. And then we have all these little pellets, which are not peppercorns. <laughs> they are examples of what happens when you eat something. It has to go in one end and come out the other, and that is caterpillar frass. But these are beautiful, beautiful caterpillars, and it makes you realize why you should have a sweet gum tree in your yard. Um, and then, um, but tell me, when you go in, you've got a special area in the Rainforest. Yes, yeah, so we, we yeah. have an so, indoor rainforest. So the rainforest forest. is one of the permanent displays. Yes, yes okay. it is. Uh -huh. And in the rainforest, we have this butterfly enclosure. Uh -huh. so and I think we've got a we've, picture of that up now. Absolutely. So we've added additional netting in there uh -huh. to lower the ceiling and to Since make it... children are absolutely. generally a little lower and, to the ground. Right. And we want the children to really be immersed in the experience. Mm -hmm. And when you enter, we'll give you um, a butterfly wand, a nectar wand, <laughs> which will be longer than this, but this is what we had on hand. Uh -huh. and, and so what we've got here is just a, a sugar, sugar, sugar yeah. right, with sugar And you water. dipped it in sugar water. Yes, ma'am. Okay. And so what we'll do is we'll try when you can, when they are lighted on the um, the flowers, you can see, for instance, we'll try to get this butter, this monarch out that we harvested. Um, and Whoa. then they'll be able Look to that. have this butterfly up close God and examine it. Way. We had some children in this afternoon, and they were just enamored well, with, with the butterfly. Be? Whoa! Um, and yeah, and so you can be surrounded by these. We'll have about 400 um, native species that'll be flying around you uh, in the butterfly enclosure, and they they may just land. One a monarch landed on my nose uh, this this afternoon That's before we came. That's pretty special. And um, and the monarch is really we we are interested in all butterflies, but the monarch particularly because it's kind of indicative of the health of the of the environment, isn't it? Yes, it is. And we actually have some monarch, I'll take this one okay. from me, some monarch caterpillars here. Um, and they are eating, feasting on milkweed, which is so vitally important um, to attract the, the monarchs. 
And the milkweed, of course, has a latex-like substance in it, as I understand, and it means that the monarch adults and caterpillars have um, compounds in them that make them unpalatable right. to um, predators. So the monarch, um, it, even, there are even butterflies that mimic the monarch, I believe. Is That's that right? correct. So yeah. it's a, kind of a natural defense system yeah, for them. Yeah. And so all this is going to be on display there. And then this caterpillar, let's pull him out because yeah, he is so cool. The yeah. is, is a large fellow and, and really cool looking. You'll notice all these different colors. I know. Look at all these bumps and things on him. And again, you said sometimes that's a defensive measure. It is. So it looks, you know, we had a little two-year-old uh, in today and she was looking at this one and she drew back oh. and she said scary. And uh -huh. that's absolutely um, what that, what that coloration intended. is for. Exactly. What uh, it's, it's defensive mechanism yeah, for them. Yeah. She said that doesn't look like the hungry caterpillar. And again, y'all, so, um, so these um, we'll be able to actually use our magic wand and hopefully get some of these out and hold them. Absolutely. The lunar moths are going to be in a special area where we can understand their life cycle. And of Absolutely. course the life cycle is fascinating yes. because you have another area where you have some of the pupating um, organisms. Correct. Tell us about that. And we have some monarchs that are just about to emerge from their chrysalis and so we're hoping that it'll happen Saturday uh, and not Sunday. But over the, f the span of the five weeks, we'll I continue to ro five, yeah. yes, we'll ro ro rotate different things in. And with all the things that are going on at Roper Mountain Science Center, there's no reason to make this a one-time visit. I think people would like to come on several occasions because y'all have so much to do there. Absolutely. There's a lot to see. And um, if people want to know more about the activities there, not just this wonderful butterfly adventure that you have coming up, but the other things, um, where's the place to go to, to get information? Um, you can just visit at ropermountain.org and on the front page you'll find all the information that you need. And I'm real proud because I think that the master gardeners who've learned their craft under Corey's excellent um, instruction help keep your butterfly garden very beautiful. Absolutely they do and we couldn't do that without the master gardeners. They'll be on hand to give tours through the garden and also talk about what, what it's like, what it takes to start your own butterfly garden. And one of the things that it takes is to plant some plants and we didn't even talk about these pretty plants because y'all have put plants out to show people um, what will attract butterflies we and have, to like, see them feeding. Absolutely, like the verbena and the lantana, they love the lantana and coreopsis as well. So we've added that into our rainforest, which normally isn't in there, just as nectaring plants to attract the butterflies. Okay, and if that isn't enough, we've got these wonderful Q-tips that we dip into sugar water. <laughs> <laughs> Thomas, this has been a lot of fun. Thank, Thank you, you again. Amanda. And again, once more, tell us that website where we should go. Uh, you can just visit ropermountain.org to learn more. Okay, um, I think a lot of people will be out there. Thanks.